Shalom, shalom, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'll be your host this evening, Elder Lynn, and we'll be going over a topic here this evening. And the title of this topic is Strange Flesh. This is a topic, my brothers and sisters, that that's uh, needed. It's a topic that needs to have discussion. And to some, I would say this is probably a sensitive topic to discuss, strange flesh. We know that these bodies that we're in are from the ground. And we also know that these bodies are cursed. That being said, we, we know that there is sin in this flesh. This particular teaching this evening is strictly for my people. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, that we must get into the Bible to find out the things that we diligently need to find out to get right with our God. We have been deceived. By, on many occasions, and we're still being deceived. We have become a, some, a similar to, to the world, as we all know. Now, for those that are here, are pretty familiar with the precepts that we use here to uh, show God's truth and his word. For the newcomers, or for those that are living a particular lifestyle, strange flesh. My hope is that you get a lot from this teaching. This is not a hate teaching. This is a teaching that needs to be brought forth. And that being said, we need to understand what's in scripture that speaks to this topic, strange flesh. So with, without further ado, my brothers and sisters, let's, let's get started. And I hope you have your, your paper, your pen and your pencil, and most importantly, as always, your Bible. So let's, let's get started and let's see what thus says the Most High God. We'll start right here at Leviticus chapter 18, verses 1 through 3. And it's recorded. And the Spirit of God spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Spirit of God, your guide. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do and after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I will bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So we see, my brothers and sisters, when the Most High God brought us out of bondage to take us into the land of Canaan, the people in the land already had ordinances that they lived by. And it's clear right here and that's recorded in scripture that we were not to follow these ordinances. So we're going to continue to move forward to find out more of, of this teaching. So we're going to go down to Leviticus 18 and 30. And it's recorded. Therefore shall ye keep my ordinance, ordinance that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Spirit of God, your guide. So we're going to build on that a, a bit, and we're going to go to Exodus chapter 18, verse 20. And it's recorded here. 
and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. So let's build on that and we'll go here to Deuteronomy chapter five, verse one. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, hear, O Israel, the statutes and the judgments, which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep and to do them. So we see my brothers and sisters that we're being commanded to follow those ordinances only of the most high God. So let's continue on. Let's go here to second Kings chapter 17, verse 37. And it says, and the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment, which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore, and ye shall not fear other gods. So let's continue to build on that. Let's go to second, I'm sorry, first address, chapter eight and verse seven. And it says, for Esdras had very great skill so that he omitted nothing to the law and commandments of the Lord, but taught all Israel the ordinances and the judgments. So we know that he was teaching the ordinances and the doctrines of the most high God. So let's continue on. So we're gonna go back to Leviticus chapter 18. Verse 27, and it's recorded. All these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. So we clearly see that going into this land, we see why Leviticus 1 and 3 suggest that we should not follow in the ordinances of the people in the land. So we're gonna hit one more verse to build on that. And we'll hit Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23. And it's recorded. And you shall not walk in any manners of the nation which I cast out before you. For they committed all these things and therefore I abhor them. So we clearly see that the Most High God is showing us those things that these people uh, are doing in the land. Keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, that we were brought forth into this country, into this land, into this wilderness. So coming out of one captivity, God commanded us not to follow under to these ordinances. And we have to be obedient, my brothers and sisters, because this particular lifestyle that uh, this strange flesh represents is not pleasing at all to the Most High God. And we're going to speak a little bit more about that. So from here, we're going to go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 and 21 down to 21, I'm sorry. And it's recorded. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Indians, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we clearly see, my brothers and sisters, that 
These are the works of the flesh. And these works have uh, the sin that's not that we're not supposed to commit towards our God. So here, and it says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and idolatry. This one right here in particular that we're going to focus on today in this teaching, because this particular spirit or this particular fruit also represents adultery. It also represents uncleanness, lasciviousness, and idolatry. So we know that uncleanness is not good. Uncleanness is not good for us because it, it's, it's against the ordinances of our God. Lasciviousness is not good because it deals with lust and desires and idolatry. This is definitely part of that. So this one spirit or this one fruit is representative of all four of these, these other spirits or other fruit. And it also is representative of homosexuality. And it's also representative of lesbianism. So the focus of this teaching is strange flesh and this lifestyle that our brothers and sisters or some of our brothers and sisters are living. These lifestyles are not pleasing unto our God. We have to understand my brothers and sisters that we have been bought here in this, in this land. We have been deceived. Like you would, like you can believe. But we can't look at that in that respect because all of these things we have bought on ourselves. In that process, we have taken hold of the things in the land that was clearly commanded by our God that we shouldn't be following. Strange flesh. So we're going to go through scripture and we're going to see a few verses that pertains to this strange flesh. Okay, so we're going to go to Ephesians from here. Ephesians 5 and 3. And it's recorded, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Four, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. Let's go to Colossians chapter three, verse five. And it says, mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil co concupiscence, and covetedness, which is idolatry. So we see here clearly, my brothers and sisters, that we need to kill this flesh, mortify. We need to kill this flesh. That means we need to continually receive our oma, we continually need to put to death this flesh. That's what mortify means. This is a topic, my brothers and sisters, that's going to be a little sensitive to some. But we got to keep pushing forward because we have been told so many things. We, we get into our mind and we listen to everything. We have to come out of that habit. We have to come out of that habit of listening to these people in these church buildings. We have to come out of this habit of letting this spirit lead us 
We're supposed to have control over our spirit. In the event that we don't have control of our spirit, the spirit is going to lead us in a direction that's not pleasing to God. That's why the Most High God gave us the very best of himself for us to follow after his spirit. If we're going to obey this evil seed that has been planted in us by the spirit of, the spirit of error, we're going to have all kinds of problems. We're going to become an enemy to our God. And not only an enemy, but we're going to be at war with our God. And if you know who the Most High God is, that's not going to turn out well for us. It's so important for us to learn and get into scripture and to find out these things that we need to be aware of. So we're able to make the right choices for ourselves so we can achieve these truths that God has for us so we can obtain eternal life. We have to break this chain, my brothers and sisters. It's very important that we understand what's the at state here. Let's continue on this teaching. And from here, we'll go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 21. And it's recorded, unless when I come again, my God will humble me among you and that I shall be well many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. We have to get out of the habit of everything that we have done is being blamed on something else. We have to get out of that. It's because of us that this, we're in this condition. It's not because of anyone else. It's not because of other things that have caused anything. It's because of us and us alone. And we have to confess, uh, confess that to our God. We can't keep hiding this sin because it's not here from our God. It may be here to you, but it's not here from our God. So we have to fess up and confess these sins to our God. So from here, let's go to 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, and verse 18. And it's recorded, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Exactly the point. We don't have to be physically doing something to sin against our God, my brothers and sisters. Sin is a thought, and it comes directly from the heart. We have to keep these things in mind. If we think of anything that's contrary to the word of God, it is sin. Let's go here to Matthew. Chapter 5, verse 28. And it's recorded. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So if we understand this verse, and if we see this woman, or even a man, for instance, and we have an attraction to this individual, whether it be on a job or whether it be a next door neighbor. And you allow all of these wicked thoughts to run into your head about being with this individual or fantasizing about this particular individual. That's sin. That's clearly sin because that was a thought that come directly from your heart. That's why the Most High God looks up on the heart. He looks up on the heart. So if this man or this woman that you have seen or that you have started to work with, or if it's a neighbor, 
That's the idol of that affection. So you see how idolatry and fornication and adultery, all of these things work in concert together. That's idolatry. That's the idol of your affection. That's why God looks upon the heart. Let's pivot just for a minute. Go to Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. And it's recorded. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 10. I, the Spirit of God, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Exactly the point. Let's go here to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You could sit in your house for a whole year and not come out of your house. You could sit in a chair, whether watching TV or looking out of the window for that whole year and can sin against God all day. It's so important for us to understand what's in the word of God. It's so important for us to understand the, the things that we are doing towards our God. We need to correct these things. He gave us the very best of himself. And we need to take advantage of this, my brothers and sisters. Strange flesh. Let's go from here. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's continue on this teaching. Let's go to Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 25. And it's recorded. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Let's build on that. Let's go to Sirach and to Psalm Ecclesiasticus. Sirach chapter nine, or Ecclesiasticus, and eight. That's recorded. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman, and look not upon another, another's beauty. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. For herewith, love is kindled as a fire. Exactly the point. We have to keep our focus, my brothers and sisters. We have to keep our focus. So from here, we're gonna pull some more information. And we're gonna learn a little bit more about this strange flesh. So we're going to go to Jude, chapter 1, and we're going to read down accordingly. And it's recorded. Jude, the servant of Yahweh Christ the Messiah, and brother of James, to them are, to them that are sanctified by Yahweh, the Creator, the Father and preserved in Yahweh Christ the Messiah and call mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Three, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of a common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was, which was once delivered unto the saints. Four, for there are certain, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our creator, salvation, the anointing one. 
So we're gonna pivot just a little bit and we're gonna go into Galatians. Galatians chapter two and verse four, that's recorded. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privately to spy out our liberty, our salvation, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they bring, might bring us into bondage. We're going to go from here to Mark, chapter 7, and verse 21 and 22. And it's recorded, far from within, out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, 22, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Let's go back to Jude. We're going to start it by and read down. And it's recorded. I will therefore put in you remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the creator having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Six. And the angels, the messengers, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved into everlasting chains under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. So we if we understand this verse, then he's gonna he's gonna keep these in this position until the great day of his wrath. Let's go to seven. Hence the teaching. And it's recorded, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So we're gonna build on that. We're gonna to go to Second Peter chapter two and verse 10. And it's recorded here. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. You know, we, a lot of our people that is living this particular lifestyle, they are so bold with how they go about things. And we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, that. In this world, the flesh reside. We have to understand that. And there's another realm that's after this world, which is of the spirit. Now, if we have any desire to achieve or to want to achieve eternal life, then we have to do what thus says the Most High God. It's not we go halfway and we do a little. That's not going to cut it. Either you're all in or you're all out. It's no other way of looking at it. It's no other way of looking at it, my brothers and sisters. So let's build on that. Let's go to Jude 16. And it's recorded. These are murmur, these are murmurous, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouths speak of great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Let's go to Second Thessalonians. Chapter 1 and verse 8. And it's recorded. And flame and fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel, the message of our creator, 
salvation, the anointed one. Let's continue. Let's go to Isaiah. Chapter 61. At verse 15 and 16. And it's recorded. For behold, the Spirit of God will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Spirit of God plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Spirit of God shall be many. So we want to understand, my brothers and sisters, where it says the Lord will plead. That's not, he's, he's not going to be speaking with you. He's not going to be doing any talking. He's going to be bringing his judgment up on us. We have to make our election while we yet are here. And if there's anyone in the sound of my voice, we have opportunity, my brothers and sisters, to get this right, can we achieve eternal life? Sure we can. How? Getting out the sin business. We have to get out of this, this way of life. This particular topic, strange flesh, this lifestyle is not pleasing to our God. I can't stress this enough. It's very important that we understand what's going on. We have to understand these, my brothers and sisters, because this is not a game that we're, we're in. This is dealing with your salvation. Some of us don't take that very seriously as we should, but we need to be mindful, my brothers and sisters, if these things that we're choosing to accept according to the flesh, then you have to know what's behind that. Here at KJBU, we hold back nothing. We give it to you straight as, as God has given it to us. We cut no corners. So my brothers and sisters, this is not a hate teaching. This is, this is a, a very important teaching that needs to be brought forth to those that are living this particular lifestyle. If you are here in this teaching, please pay attention. Understand what's being said to you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go to Malachi. Chapter four. At verse one, and it's recorded. For behold, remember, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Spirit of God of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. This is serious business, my brothers and sisters. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 13. It's recorded, every man's work shall be made manifest, which means made known, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Exactly the point. Let's go to Revelations. Chapter 21. At verse 8, and it's recorded here, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and the brimstone, which is the second death. Keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, if we don't wake as we're going through these teachings as as we're learning daily and weekly here at KJBU, if we're not receiving our OMA as we should, if we're not searching diligently in the scriptures for the truth of God's word, we're going to have a problem. Because again, this word 
has to be in us in order for us to receive eternal life. So we have to wait till the first resurrection. It's important. Let me show you what, what's going on here. This is Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, and it's recorded. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So we want, we want to be a part of this first resurrection because we have power here. The second resurrection, you have none, absolutely none. So let's continue on this teaching, my brothers and sisters. We're gonna go from here to Genesis. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to go to Genesis 19 and 1. And we're going to read it down. And it's recorded. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, arose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Verse 2. And he said, Behold, now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the streets all night. So we need to understand, wash your feet. Wash your feet. That means to cleanse your path. So don't let that get past you. And you shall rise up early. That's a new start. That's a new beginning. So I always keep that in mind, my brothers and sisters, as we go through scripture. And verse three, and it says, and he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast. And they did, uh, and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. So he gave them instruction. He gave them instruction, and it was unleavened. It was pure knowledge that he gave unleavened bread, and they did learn. So let's continue on. And it says here in four, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, Five. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. These men wanted to have sex with these, these men. Strange flesh. We have to understand Sodom and Gomorrah was these cities that allowed all of this particular lifestyle, both men and women, strange flesh. Let's build on this uh, a little. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4 and at verse 1. And it says, And Adam knew his wife and conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. This is the part that I need from this text. Adam knew his wife. That means they came together. Let's go to Judges. For some information from there. Judges 19 and verse 22. And we want to see what's recorded here. And it's recorded. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, remember, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man saying, bring forth the man 
that came into thine house that we may know him. They wanted to have relations with these men, these other men. Let's go to Hosea. Hosea chapter 9 and verse 9. And it's recorded. They have, com they have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins. Exactly the point. And we're going to go from here to Romans. Romans chapter 1 and 24. And it's recorded. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Exactly the point. So we're going to go back to Genesis 19. I'm going to hit verse 6. And it's recorded. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. Seven, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters, which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore they came under the shadow of my roof. So we understand the shadow of his roof is a covering. So we know lot means covering. So don't let that get past you. Lot means covering. So let's see, in verses nine, and it says, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn and he will need be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man. Even Lot came near to break the door. So we're gonna, or some information. So we're going to go to Genesis 13, verses 12 and 13. And it's recorded. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the spirit of God exceedingly. So we see again how wicked these people are in Sodom and Gomorrah. We see that this is a lifestyle that both the men folk and the women folk were living. Men with men and women with women. Strange flesh. Second Peter. We'll go. Second Peter, verse chapter two, verse seven, and verse eight, and it's recorded. And delivered just lot, vexed with filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, exactly the point. We're gonna build on that. We're gonna to go to the wisdom of Solomon and the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 and verse six. And it's recorded right here, my brothers and sisters. 
When the ungodly perished, she delivered the righteous man who fled from the fire, which fell down upon the five cities. So the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 17. And it's recorded. Therefore, even with blindness were these stricken as those were at the doors of the righteous man. When being compassed about with horrible, great darkness, everyone sought to stop the passage of his own doors. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 19 and verse 10. And it's recorded. But then, but the men put forth their hand and poured a lot into the house to them and shut the door. So we'll build on that. And we'll go from here to Second Kings. Second Kings chapter six, verse 18. And it's recorded. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Spirit of God and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. So we want to understand that Elisha, Elisha means God is salvation. So let's keep that in mind, my brothers and sisters. So we're going to go from here. We're going to go back to Genesis chapter 19 and verse 11. And we're going to read on down a bit as recorded. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Has thou here any besides son in law and thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city? bring them out of this place. So we clearly see the, they are being warned to come out of this, 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 this place. And it says 13, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the spirit of God. And the spirit of God hath sent us to destroy it. So we understand that these two, these two messengers that came to this place was sent there by the most high to destroy the city. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, however many people, the people that are here, that's the number of kingdoms that are listening to this teaching. Understand that. Those are kingdoms. Every person that's here is a kingdom. They represent a kingdom. So don't let that get past you. So 14, and it's recorded. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, up, get you out of this place, for the Spirit of God will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law, which means he laughed. 15, and when the morning arose, then the angels hastened, Lot saying, arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city, which is great, of course. 16, and while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters and the spirit of God being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. 17, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. 
escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. 18. And Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, I die, and I die. 20. Behold, behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. 21. And he said, Unto him, see, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. 22. Haste thee, escape thither. Why well, can I do anything till thou, be, till thou come thither? Therefore, the name of this city was called Zor. So up here, in verse 20, a little one is what Zor is called. A little one. 23, and it's recorded, and it says, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. 24, and this is a result of the lifestyle that these individuals lead. Uh, that these individuals led in Sodom and Gomorrah. This was the recompense that they received. Then the Spirit of God rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Spirit of God out of the heavens. 25. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the earth, on the ground. So we see here, my brothers and sisters, that living this lifestyle in these cities, in these two cities, the most I wasn't pleased at all. Men with men, women with women. We clearly have a huge problem with that in our nation of people. And we, we clearly need to understand that we have to we have to remove ourselves from this lifestyle. We have to remove ourselves from sinning against our God. We have to confess these sins that we've committed against our God. We got a lot of work to do, my brothers and sisters, if we're planning on trying to get into the kingdom of our God. It's important that we understand what's going on around us. It's important that we understand these things. We have to learn about God. We have to understand what we have to do to get back right with our God. Sure, we have been deceived, but we bought all of these things on ourselves. It's because of what we want to do. It's because if this wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have done this. We have to stop blaming it on other people and other things of the things that we have committed against our God. We have taken upon this lifestyle, and you hear all the time that a lot of these people say, well, I was born this way, or I'm a man trapped in a, wo in a woman's body, or I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. Because if you're saying these things to yourself, or if people are saying that they were they were created this way. That's a lie. That suggests that my God has made a mistake and my God hasn't made no mistakes. Everything in his word has been recorded and established. Don't blame this on my God. You have been convinced of something by someone or some spirit of something that completely told you a falsehood.
You haven't been born this way. We're going to pivot for a minute. We're going to pivot for a minute. We're going to go to Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7, verse 29. And it's recorded. Lo, this only have I found that Yahweh have made man upright. I'm only pausing for effect. Let's go to Genesis. Chapter 1 and verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. Let's go to Genesis 5 and 2. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name their name, Adam, in the day when they were created. The woman's genitalia is made perfectly for the man's genitalia. Nowhere in scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelation will you see two men and two women that God has created in that fashion. Nowhere in scripture. So where are you pulling your information from? The God that I serve make no mistakes. How is it that you could be deceived when you have, you're a part of the evidence? This is not a hate teaching. This is not a teaching that we, we, we disrespect those that are living that particular lifestyle. But this is a teaching to grab your attention of the things that we must do to get right with our God. That life, that lifestyle has to cease if you're seeking eternal life. It has to cease. If you're confused as to who and what you are, I'll help you out. All you have to do is go into your restroom, drop trial and look between thy legs. That's going to depict whether you're a male or whether you're a female. The reason that I'm saying this is because we have fallen victim to someone telling us this and convincing us of this. Someone is telling some of our men that they have, they're a woman and someone has convinced our women that they are male. The God that I serve make no mistakes at all. Nowhere in scripture will you find a mistake. We have to stop believing in everything that we hear. The scripture says, let's go back to it. Leviticus 18 and 3. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their Ordinances. Let's go down to 27 again. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. That's clear. What is it that we're missing? If you're confused as to what you are and who you are, that's why we have the scriptures given unto us. The Bible is clear. 
It's very clear, my brothers and sisters. We need to understand what thus says the Most High God. We have to get rid of these spirits that's causing us to sin against our God. We have to get out of this habit of, this is my life. No, it's not. You have a choice to make. Either it's going to be to the right side of the plumb line, or it's going to be to the left side of the plumb line. You have to make that choice. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High God. Let's move forward. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 40. And it's recorded. As Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Spirit of God, so shall no man abide here there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. That's real clear. Let's go to Romans. Let's see what's recorded here. We're going to go to Romans 1 and 20. And it's recorded. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. That's why we go through these teachings, my brothers and sisters, to make sure that we're understanding what are the things we have to do and understanding what God is saying to us as we read and do our studies in scripture. It's important that we, we understand what's going on around us. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain and their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So it's foolishness if we continue on in a lifestyle that's not pleasing to our God, but yet we want to get into his kingdom. That's foolishness. Let's build on this. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 17 and 18. And it's recorded. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Creator that ye have forth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. 18. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. This is not a lifestyle that you, you should be one to, to participate in. This is a design to keep you separated from God. We have to do better, my brothers and sisters. We have to stay connected to scripture. Let's go back to Romans 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Let's build on that. Let's go to Jeremiah. Chapter 10. At verse 14. And it's recorded, every man's, every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in them. We have to come out of these churches. We have to stop listening to all of this foolishness. This world was given into the hand of the wicked, my brothers and sisters. We have to be mindful of the things that surround us. 
We have to stay connected to the scriptures so we can't be separated from our God. We have to find out everything we need to know on what we need to do to get right with our God and the things that we need to achieve to, etern, uh, to achieve eternal life. Let's go back to Romans chapter 23. And it says, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man and, and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things which we know is flesh. So let's go to Jeremiah. Chapter two, verse 11. And it's recorded. Have the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which do not profit. Exactly the point. How have we fallen victim to this, my brothers and sisters? God told us, don't follow after the ordinances when we came into the land. It's clear. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Four, verse 15 down through 19. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Spirit of God spake unto you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire. 16. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. 17. The likeness of any beast that is on earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth up on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. 19, unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven should be driven to worship them and serve them which the Spirit of God, thy guide, hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 12, verse 24. And it's recorded. For they went astray, fair very far in the ways of error, and held them for gods, which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised, being deceived as children of no understanding. That's the whole purpose of these teachings, my brothers and sisters. Daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, we have to eat to our fill. We can't become stagnant in our walk. We have to keep our focus. We have to not let any of these things beset us. Because if Satan really gets a hold of us, I mean he really gets a good grip where we can't get out of this, we're going to have an eternal problem with our God. We have to learn these things right now, my brothers and sisters, while we yet still have breath in us. Let's go back to Romans. Chapter one, verse 24. As recorded, wherefore Yahweh also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Let's go to Ephesians 4 and 19. 
And it says, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Go back to Romans 1 to 25. As we wind down this teaching. And it's recorded. Who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? Amen. Let's go to Isaiah. Chapter 28. At verse 15, and it's recorded, because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through it, shall not come unto us, for we have made lies, our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. We need to come out of this, my brothers and sisters. We need to aim at one way we could get the south off of our eyes. We have to dig into the scriptures for the truth of God's word. That's the only way it's coming off. Eye drops is not going to get it. Water is not going to get it. You have to have this truth to clear your eyes so you can see the true light Let's continue on, my brothers and sisters. Let's go to Romans 1 and 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Strange flesh. I'm just pausing for effect. Strange flesh. Let's go to Ephesians. Five and 12. And it's recorded. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Because this word is going to bring their truth to light. The word is going to bring all of this that's hidden to light. Let's go to Jude, verse 10. And it's recorded. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts and those things they corrupt themselves. Exactly the point. with this particular lifestyle and everything else that's contrary to the word of God, we corrupt ourselves and we're separated further and further apart from the most high God. Let's go back to Romans. One and 27. And it's recorded here. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Leaving the natural use of the woman, the woman needing, leaving the natural use of the man, women and women, men and men. This lifestyle is very un pleasing to our God and will not be accepted. We have to change our walk, my brothers and sisters, while we have opportunity. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, you have opportunity. Don't be stagnant. 
Don't wait till tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow may hold. You don't know what the next second is going to hold for you. You need to make that change as we speak. It's a lifestyle that's not pleasing to our God. Either you were created male or you were created female. Let's continue on. Let's build on this understanding. We're going to go to Leviticus, chapter 18, and verse 22. And it's recorded Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. We're going to build on that. Leviticus 20 and 13. And it's recorded right here. If a man also lied with mankind as he lied with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them, upon them. This information is embedded here in scripture. It's right here, my brothers and sisters. It's right in front of us. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6. And verse 9. And it's recorded. And we're going to read verse 9 and 10. And it's recorded. Know ye that. Know ye not that. The right unrighteous. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Those are men and men and women and women. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. 11. And such were some of you, but Ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are, I'm sorry, I skipped the verse, forgive me. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortionists shall inherit the kingdom of God. 11, and such were some of you, but ye were washed, but ye were sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Spirit of the creator, salvation, and by the spirit of our God. We have to leave this particular lifestyle alone, my brothers and sisters. This teaching is necessary. Let's go to Sirach, the Psalm Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 18, and verse 30. And it's recorded. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. The only appetite we should have is that which God has for us in his word. We should be daily seeking his truth. We should be daily receiving our Oma. Keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, there's a reason why I constantly say this. Exodus 16 and 4, as recorded, then said the Spirit of God unto Moses, Remember, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them, test them whether they will walk in my law or no. That's why I constantly reiterate this to you, my brothers and sisters. We have to make sure that we're tilling our ground from whence we've came. We have to make sure that there's no unnecessary weed growing in our garden that's gonna affect the harvest, that's gonna affect our increase. 
God is going to send us this every day to see if we're going to receive it or not. We have to make our election sure, my brothers and sisters. We're going to hit a couple more verses before we end this teaching. And we're going to go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 30, 31 through 34. And it's recorded right here. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. From here, we're going to go to Leviticus and 19 and verse 29. And it's recorded. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. So my brothers and sisters, we need to pull one more verse so we're absolutely sure of what's expected of us by our God. We're going to hit Deuteronomy 10. 12 and 13, and it's recorded. And now, Israel, what do if the Spirit of God thy guide require thee, but to fear the Spirit of God thy guide, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Spirit of thy guide, thy guide with all thy heart and with all thy soul? 13, and to keep the commandments of the Spirit of God, and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So we see here, my brothers and sisters, that we need to, we got a lot of work ahead of us. We, we, it's not too late for us. We could turn and, and go in a different direction. And as long as that direction is in the path of the Most High God and his way, we can't go wrong. My brothers and sisters, I hope this teaching, for those that are living this particular lifestyle, I hope this teaching helps you. I hope this teaching is edifying unto you. And to, to my brothers and sisters that have joined me here, I hope you were greatly edified. And let's continue on as we go through scripture to, to dig and, and, and search deep for the truth of God's word and to stay connected to the Bible, my brothers and sisters. I can't stress this enough. Receive your Oma, by all means. I, I, I can't say that enough. Receive your Oma. Continue to search the scriptures for the truth of God's word. If you're diligently seeking after God, he has no choice but to pour upon you his truth. So my brothers and sisters, I thank you for your time. And until we meet again, I say to each and every one of you, Shalom.